Oh, you sweetie. Welcome to Clarity Off Grid. We are so excited today to show you our van. After traveling in it for almost a year now, there's been some changes that we wanted to make and we've done a lot of upgrades. So we want to share that with you today. Finally, the van is actually, I think, done. Um, it's been, we've been traveling with it. There have been little things that have been not quite right and not quite finished. And like every project, you know, you, you get toward the end and you don't finish it. Now it's done. Every last detail. So we decided to go with a ProMaster 136. It's a ProMaster 2500, 136 inch wheelbase. Why go with the 136 wheelbase? Oh look, organic ice cream. Oh. oh, we gotta stop. Oh, that is so good. Honey, you missed the turn. Hi, we're Matt and Christina, and we've been traveling in our van Clarity for nearly a year now. And when we're not visiting new and exciting places, we're enjoying our off-grid home in the mountains. Join us as we explore living off the grid in both our van and our sustainable home. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so that you get notified when we upload new videos. Okay, so let's go inside and we'll show you around. So one of the first design considerations we had because we chose the shorter van was how we were going to do the dinette and the eating area. There's really not enough room for a full banquette in a short van. So this is how we solved the problem. We put swivels on each one of the chairs so that we can turn the chairs back this direction when we're camping. The other thing we did was we made this table that's super adjustable. It's made with a lagoon table mount and we can have the table in this position where we both can eat. We can swivel it this direction and then I can use it as an office. And we can raise it up and have it a little higher and then we have additional countertop space. One of the first things we learned after using the van for a short while is that we needed some light over the table. So Matt added this battery operated light. It just sticks up here in the cab and that adds great light for when I'm working or when we're eating. So one of the consequences of putting the swivels on the seats is that it raises it up and it was already pretty high for me. Um, I'm five foot seven so I'm not particularly small, but my feet wouldn't hit the ground when we were driving. So Matt made this cool little step for me. And now it's much more comfortable to ride in and my feet don't dangle. And then I also use it for some extra storage. I put like my flip flops and things like that under there. It's really important in any van and especially a short van to utilize all the storage you can. And so this was a pretty clever idea that Matt came up with. The original van ended here, and so our feet would have just been swinging. So Matt added this entire platform here out, and so we had all this space, and so we used it to store our shoes under here. So this is a perfect place to store our shoes. They're out of the way, and then we have a platform for our feet. One of the areas of storage that kind of evolved over time is this space behind the driver's seat. And originally I put all my camera gear and my office bag back there and it made it really difficult to swivel Matt's seat without removing all of that gear. So I took all the camera gear, reorganized it so that I can put it in my backpack so it's in a smaller container. So now we just have one bag back there and it makes it possible to swivel the seat without removing all the gear. And up here we have the above cab storage and we store all the reflective blinds for the cab area as well as the sliding door. And then I keep my hat up here. We have grocery bags and we also keep extra bags for the garbage can. So 
So one important factor in the van is lighting. Um, you definitely don't want to have too little light and we have these small puck lights up there. Four of them across there is plenty of light. It's, it's quite impressive. Uh, these are 250 lumen lights each, LED lights, uh, 12 volts, and they run off a switch and they also have a dimmer so that we can uh, have some mood lighting in here. And then I also have under cabinet lights here for the countertop, uh, which are also on a dimmer. We put in this custom spice rack uh, so that we have a place to store the main spices that we use all the time and then our olive oil. So I use the sunflower oil for baking, but I also use it for keeping the uh, walnut oiled. I have a walnut countertop and our table is walnut also. The sink is right here that has a butcher block over the top uh, that you can use for extra counter space. And then we just take that off. It stores right down here when we're not using it. And then we've got your classic hot and cold running water kitchen sink. We wanted, we wanted to have both the hot and cold running water. It works great. And this little thing is really worth its weight in gold. I mean, this thing is was cheap, but it holds the sponge, keeps the sponge dry mostly, and then also holds the stopper for the sink. And I also wanted to point out that, um, that with this spice rack, I just made uh, a little piece of wood here that fits in there that keeps these from bouncing out when we're driving. And it's very easy to store, take them out and store them there. So I've got one for there. And then because these are deeper, um, I made one that has just a little clip here that I can slide that in there. Keeps everything from falling out when we're driving. So then I can just unclip the countertop when I'm ready to cook. It leans against the backsplash. Our stove top is here. We have a three burner stove top and it's propane. Very simple, easy to use. On the back here, I have a nice soft piece of cloth, but don't let this fool you. This is welding cloth and um, it's impervious. You could stand here with a blowtorch and it will not catch fire and it protects the wood here from catching fire uh, in case it gets too hot behind the stove. Okay, when we're ready to travel, this can just flop down and latch so that it doesn't come open. These pop into here. So then I just loosen the tabletop, bring it up so that it's above the countertop, slide it over and lock it into position. And then I can just tighten this down a little bit that keeps it from moving. It's nice and solid, works great for traveling. Then, when the swivel seat is stowed in position, you'll notice that I've got about eight, 10 inches here between the table and the cabinet and the seat. Many people actually like to utilize that space and put a cabinet all the way up to there, which does give you some good usable cabinet space. But uh, I don't know, I chose to do it this way so that we would have the swivel seats. It's really important for us to have both seats swivel. When this seat swivels, you actually only have a little bit of clearance here. But it was very important for us to have swiveling seats that we could utilize as space for us to eat, play games, and do those types of things. So we elected to manage it this way. And so down here is our refrigerator. We have a Dometic uh, CRX 65, 65 uh, quart, I guess it is, um, which has really plenty of room for us. We can, we can store a week's worth of groceries in here um, and it's got a little freezer we've got some uh, garden burgers some ice in there which is really important for cocktail hour 
You'll notice I made these drawers so that they fit. This one fits just underneath the sink and it has a little cutout for the sink drain, which in this particular sink, I was able to put the drain as far back as possible, which helps give me as much depth as I can possibly get. And then un under the sink is the P-trap. And so I have this cut out for the P-trap. And same thing here, the bottom of the P-trap just has a little indentation. But everything that we need is here. And then our bottom drawer has all our pots and pans, as well as our pantry for everything we don't store in the refrigerator. So a couple things we added over time uh, from the original design. One was our paper towel holder. And then behind that, I've got a place for maps. Uh, just a little cabinet that I built. Um, I raised it up here to make room for this to get in and out because this is our trash can and you need a place to put your trash and your recycling. Um, we chose to use this small thing. We can usually get about two or three days out of a single uh, bag here and then we just go dump it. It's very simple and easy to use. We have a Max Air fan that's very common in the vans. These are great fans if you haven't, if you're trying to decide whether to put a uh, fan in your van. The Max Air fans are really great. They're like 10, 10 speeds. This is the lowest speed. It goes way up there. And with that thing on high, and the windows open, it draws so much air in here, keeps it cool even when it's 90 degrees outside. In addition to the Max Air fan, I also have one of these gimbal fans here. And this thing is very maneuverable. I can move it around. I can put it over this way. I can put it over that way. Um, I can lock it into position. And then I can move it both up and down and sideways. And that also adds a really nice airflow, airflow over the bed when it's hot out. Um, when we do have the dogs in here and we want to go for a hike or a bike ride, we need to keep the dogs in the van. Even when it's hot out in the 90s, early low 90s, um, we feel comfortable leaving the van open with the vents going and this fan on and they can stay nice and cool in here. Another thing I did recently is I added a high level indicator light for the gray water tank so that I can see when it's getting full uh, so that we don't have to wait until it backs up into the sink to let me know that it's full. Um, this little light right here will turn red when I reach about uh, three quarters full on the tank. So it gives me time to both see it and to empty the gray water tank before it fills up. We have plenty of storage in our upper cabinets. Plates, tall things, bags of chips, very important. Um, our glasses, cups, um, snacks up here, dishes, plates, and bowls. Um, and then plenty of food storage. Uh, what we don't keep in the pantry down there, we have room for up here, or what doesn't fit up here fits down in the pantry. It's, uh, it's really pretty functional. And because I have bad eyes, it really helps me to have lighted cabinets. Next, we have our closet. And we have plenty of room in here. We don't have this even half full. We could fill it up quite a bit more. I've also got room in here for uh, drones, electronics, uh, a double hammock, which is very important. Um, extra blanket just for cuddling. We've got books, uh, GoPro, um, and plenty of room in here. So I've also got hooks and clips in here. I've got a Got a hook for the fly swatter, a hook for the drain cleaner if we need that. I also put clips on this side. I've got a clip for an umbrella. Clips right in place 
so it doesn't fall over and become a problem. And I have a clip for the broom. Yeah. And down here, I just have a little step for getting in and out of bed. Makes it very easy. We almost never use it <laughs> because even with this down, I've got a place to step. And down here, we've got access to the garage. We've got our backpacks and our dog food back there. And here we have our Nature's Head composting toilet. We have a full review of this Nature's Head composting toilet as well as the Sea Head composting toilet that we use at home. Uh, in our video entitled The Scoop on Poop. We'll leave a link to our Scoop on Poop video in the description below. We do have our toilet on, a drawer, sl on drawer slides and um, one upgrade I have not made yet that I think would be a good upgrade is to upgrade this to a 400 pound or even 500 pound drawer slide. These work for us and neither of us weigh a whole lot but um, it would be just a little bit more smooth and uh, long lasting, I think, with a better drawer slide. So then here on the outside of the van, I do have a push button light here so that if it's in the dark, I can open that, turn that on, and that's an entry light right above where we step up into the van. And then one of the upgrades that I did I put these black receptacles in the van originally and I soon discovered that with macular degeneration and blind spots in my eyes uh, that I have, I could not find the prongs to get the plug in. So I just recently changed those out, out to ivory and it's so much better for me. So just something to think about if you don't have great eyesight is keeping these light. For the record, I couldn't see them either. <laughs> so the other thing we have on the driver's side, um, behind the driver's seat on the kitchen cabinet is a receptacle and a charging station, as well as I have a switched fan that draws air across the back of the refrigerator to keep it cool and it keeps its efficiency high. So here we are in the bunk area. We chose to put the bed across the back of the van like this, and it fits a standard sized double bed. And so we were able to just use a futon that we had on hand, so we didn't have to have a custom sized bed made. So at the foot of each of our bed, we have our clothes storage. And again, Matt put in lights so that we have lots of light for finding our clothes. This is Matt's cabinet. I have one my own on this side. And when we're not in use, we can turn that light off. One of the nicest features I like about this bunk is that we have windows on both the foot side of the bed and on the head side so at night we can open those windows and get lots of fresh air across the bed. We went through several cycles of figuring out what kind of window coverings we wanted in the bunk and we started off with some window coverings that just stuck up here and then when we weren't in use we had to find a place to store them. So we decided we'd rather have blinds that stay in place so I made these blinds and they fold up and all we have to do is unvelcro the straps like that, pull that one down and they unfold. They're magnetized so they clip right to these bars down here and then we have a nice blind. It blocks out light and they're also made with easy cool so that they keep the van cool when it's hot out and it helps keep the heat in when it's cold out. And what is easy cool? Easy cool is an insulative reflective material that we use throughout the build of the van and we had a whole roll of it. So it was the perfect material to make blinds with. 
If you want to know more about how I made those blinds, I did a full tutorial video and we'll leave a link in the description down below for that video as well. So on Matt's side of the bed, we have the controllers for the heater. We also have a thermometer and we have some storage so we can keep our iPad um, and we have charging cords so that we can charge both of our phones and have them you know, up and out of the way as well as our um, jet pack can all be stored in one easy place. So Matt has a light and I have a light. One of our favorite upgrades is these drawings of Jesse and Lily. Our dear friend Kim, who you met in a video we did previously called They Copied Our Van, she sketched these drawings from photos that we gave her and um, we absolutely love them. They totally captured the essence of our sweet doggies. Matt made these beautiful walnut frames and then we were able to just use Velcro to stick them to the wall. If you would like to have Kim make a beautiful portrait of your favorite pet, we'll leave her email in the description down below so you can contact her directly. And thank you so much, Kim. We absolutely love these. Another one of the latest updates we did to the van was one of those details that just kept being left undone. And that is this ugly piece up here that has all these holes. So we just made a fabric valence for this. I cut this to fit the um, curve of the van, put a little hem on it, and then I sewed magnets so that it could attach and it just pops on and off with magnets. So that covers all the unmentionables and the cur curtain rod. One of my favorite things about van life is having my first cup of coffee or tea in bed. And it was always a problem because I never had a place to set down my coffee cup. So Matt made me this beautiful little shelf next to my bed where I can put safely keep my coffee cup and anything else so I can keep my hair clips or what else I need personal items up here. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> The other thing we've done just over time is Matt always has hooks available because as we've used the van, it's like, oh, I could really use a hook here or there. So Matt's added little hooks on either side of our bed. He keeps his headlamp there. It's always nice to have a red headlamp handy. Uh, saves your night vision and makes it easy to see things when you just can't see. I also made a couple of little just panels with velcro on them and i stuck a little velcro up there and just covered up the holes that are on the framing of the van the other really nice thing about sleeping in this bunk area is that if we're in a place that's warm and we feel safe having the doors open we can draw these curtains across the back and that gives us some privacy and then with this new valance that i put in it also keeps the bugs out the other thing that we discovered right away is you need to have some kind of bug protection. And uh, we looked at lots of different ideas and ultimately what we came up with was super cheap and super easy. We just bought a sheer panel at the linen store. We hung it on this bungee cord that goes from a hook over here to a hook here. And all we have to do is draw that shear panel across and then we have some extra magnets if we need to clip it down to the bottom and that's our bug screen the only thing i had to do was i had to cut a little bit of material off the bottom and add another hem and we have our pretty soft feminine fluffy <laughs> bug screen <laughs> So one of the main problems that we have in a van this small is storage. And I decided on our last trip that we really needed to upgrade the back end um, to maximize our storage space. So the first thing I did is I actually built a slide out tray for the bikes. This tray keeps all of our bike gear 
as well as uh, two bikes. Everything we need right there. They both fit in that small space. And of course you need a space for everything and everything in its place, right? One of the things we really had difficulty with with the other configuration is we had our bikes in here and I had a cabinet that I had built in here. It was a smaller cabinet and it was hard to access when the bikes are in there. It was an afterthought in the original design and I just put something up there so we'd have some storage. But this needed to be formalized into something that really works. So what I did is I got again some 400 pound drawer slides and I put them up in a way so that the bikes can also slide in and out and so does this. Um, and now we have a really nice spot right back here next to our shower for our laundry, uh, laundry, dirty laundry and literally our laundry soap is in sheets and these things are the best for van life. And then I've also got room for my compressor, uh, which, you know, if you need to air down your tires, you can pump your tires back up. I've got cocoa coir for the toilet, trash bags, a um, little extra flagging here, and some extra trash bags there, and extra bungee cords, just things that you might need. Gloves. And there's still more room. I can, I can utilize this for a lot of different things. But one of the main really advantages to having this as a pullout is needing to access my electrical equipment. So I'll show you that. I'm going to pull out the bike drawer again. And you can, you can see how tight this is if you, if you look up there. My handlebars barely make it accessing the garage from the front and I can just go in here get down on my little bottom turn on the light and voila I have access to my entire electrical system my hot water heater which this is a Bosch electric uh, water heater that only provides hot water for the sink. One of the things I did is I actually moved my batteries from back in the back where I just didn't need to really access those all the time. I only need them when I need to winterize the uh, van. I can I need to take those out. Now I have full access to take those out. I have my jumper cables here, um, a tow strap here, just more room for stuff. My um, Propex heater, and I could store something on there, but I'd rather just keep that open, keep the airflow good in there. But I've got my battery chargers, my inverter, my charge controller, um, all accessible, as well as a switch. I can disconnect the batteries just by turning off the battery isolate switch. Um, really nice to have this access. So up on the roof, I have 525 watts of char solar charging panels. My two lithium ion batteries totaling 340 amp hours right here. I've got three different chargers. I have a battery to battery charger that charges off the alternator. Then I have the solar charge controller, which is right here. I have my uh, pure sine wave inverter here for my AC and my third charge controller is right here and this is this is an AC to DC charge controller and this I use only when we're plugged into shore power. I also have access to my toolbox which is sits right in here and then I have storage here for I can put 12 cans of uh, fizzy water and or beer whatever I want in here and I have storage here we don't even we're not even using right now we'll see what that ends up getting used for but it'll be functional and then we've got our dog food here our backpacks here all accessible just by pulling out the bikes a little bit we have storage for our levelers here and I've also got block type levelers here 
And I've got my propane storage here. This uh, propane, propane is heavier than air, so there's a hole in the bottom that goes out through the bottom of the van and it ventilates. So if this pressure relief valve goes off and, and this uh, compartment fills up with propane, it'll just drain out the bottom. Behind the floor levelers is our cabinet. This is where we store the teak mat, our ladder, and our table, our chairs. We've got our kayak paddles and our floor mat for our living room. We have a 25 gallon water, fresh water tank back here and water pump, water filter. This filters out chlorine um, and all kinds of things. The only thing that it does not filter out is total dissolved solids. So you don't want to be putting salty water in your, in your tank. So the white hose that we had over here is our gray water hose. We don't want to fill our tank our freshwater tank with our gray water hose. So we have these really nice collapsible uh, expanding 25 foot hoses. And uh, on our last trip, we added an extra 25 foot hose, but um, these hoses are small and compact. They're actually about eight feet long each until you put them under pressure. When you put them under pressure, they expand to 25 feet long. And um, so we've got 50 feet of hose that we can use to connect up to uh, a water source to fill our fresh water tank. Our shower is an outdoor shower. Our on-demand water heater vents right out the top so when the doors are open it's no big deal to have a uh, have it vent that way so all I have to do is turn the water on and flip the switch here and we have instant hot water boom already hot that feels so good when I'm done when we're done using the shower we just turn it off and let the pressure off and we're ready to move. How do you get privacy, you might say? Well, I'm glad you asked. This little slick thing here is our shower curtain. And all I have to do is unroll it, hook it up there, hook it up there. Voila. When it gets windy, Sometimes this can be a little bit of an issue, having a shower curtain blowing on you like this. So we manage that by just putting these nice strong magnets right down there. And then on this one, I can pull the shower curtain tight. And then it keeps the shower curtain off us while we're showering. <laughs> and then we can protect this area here with our curtains. All we've got to do is close that up. It keeps water out of the garage. What really makes using this shower super nice is one, having a shower curtain for privacy and for warmth, but the teak mat is really important because it keeps your feet from getting dirty and then tracking mud all over. So who wants to take a shower and then have muddy feet? the last upgrade that we did, but not the least important. And that is we added some storage to the top of the van. When we were in Baja, we brought a paddleboard, which was great. It was really nice to have the paddleboard and to get out on the water. But one of the things uh, that with that paddleboard, we weren't able to bring bikes and we found that probably that was the hardest thing for us when we were in Baja was to actually get enough exercise and hiking trails there weren't a lot of those but there were roads where we could go mountain biking uh, and biking and so we decided we really wanted to have bikes with us on the trip but we also really wanted to have something where we could get out on the water and get out on the water together. So we got a tandem two-person inflatable kayak and uh, we needed storage for that. So what I did is I built a little deck on the 
top of the van in front of the solar panels so that I would have a place to store the inflatable kayak. The other issue that we have when we're traveling is carrying dog food because we feed the dogs really good food. It's human grade uh, dehydrated food and this food, this box here is the equivalent of a 40 pound bag of dog food. Our two dogs go through one of these in about eight to ten days. When we're traveling like in Mexico, you can't get this in Mexico and we need a place to store maybe like we're going down to Mexico uh, next month for a couple of months. We're gonna have to bring eight boxes of dog food. So what I did to make storage to bring this much food is I took a, one of the dry boxes that I have from my rafting gear and put it on top of the van on top of that deck and tied it down, put a lock on it and now we have storage up there that will fit all eight boxes of dog food plus swim gear and a few extra things. Fairing. I put a couple bolts through the fairing on the front so that I can mount the yak tracks right on the front of the fairing. So now we have everything that we need. And I know through all this filming you are wondering what is that crank for over there? <laughs> so I'm gonna show you. So we went with the Dometic 9500 awning and this is the manual version. They do make a 12 volt version but I prefer to keep things simple uh, you know more motors and things you have, the more you have just something else to break. When you live in a small space and a short van, having really nice outdoor living space is really nice. One thing we did change, and we kind of went through an evolution of learning, was our chairs. If you saw our first van build, we had really big, comfy chairs. But we found over time that they were just really hard to store. We tried several different kinds of chairs and we just went back to the travel chair. It compacts into a nice stuffed bag and it just slides perfectly into the back end. So now we have two of those. This table was an addition too and it's really nice to have a table. With our chairs now lower chairs, it's nice to have this table low, but it does have expandable legs. You flip this switch on the legs and it'll raise up to 32 inches high. The other thing that's really nice, and it helps keep the dirt from getting into the van, is having a nice rug. We found this rug, it's six feet by nine feet, and it folds up, again, into a stuff sack that's not a whole lot bigger than the chairs. And our living room is complete. Yeah, if you wanna learn any more about uh, the van build itself, uh, we have quite a few videos. Uh, from the van build. We also have some travel videos from Baja, uh, from the Northwest, and some of the other videos that we've, uh, uh, some of the other locations that we've traveled in the past year. And we'll put those links to those playlists in the description down below. We post our videos at least every Saturday, and we'll see you, see on, you on the, the next, next one. one.